Hey guys, Sterling here, and a video as epic as this needs no introduction. I cannot wait to jump into this discussion, so let's get right into it. Today, we are discussing what if Aizen, Gein, and Tozen were still a part of the Gotei 13 going into the Thousand Year Blood War. Now, usually we don't do out-of-story what-ifs on this channel, meaning if it couldn't have happened in the story, we aren't going to talk about it. But this what-if is a little bit different. Obviously, there is no Ichigo if the Aizen events don't take place how they did, no Rukia execution, etc., etc. So we are going to be approaching this what-if a little bit differently. Really, what I want to focus on is how would Gein, Tozen, and Aizen handle themselves in the first and second invasions? How would they go about combating the Stern Raider? How would they strategize? What sort of interactions would take place? It's an extremely interesting topic to think about. Now, I don't want to spoil anything, but just Aizen's interactions alone are going to be insane to discuss, considering he never revealed a Bankai and his Shikai would be an absolute menace on the battlefield. Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get right into this video. Don't forget to smash the like button, smash the subscribe button for more awesome Bleach and JJK videos just like this one. And as always, let's stay interactive in the comment sections below, because guys, ultimately, that is the only reason I make these videos. I love discussing Bleach with fellow Bleach fans in a non-toxic toxic atmosphere and guys if you want to be a part of this little community i'm building i would love to have you because like i said we just love talking our favorite shows and our favorite things so let's always keep that in mind as we are having conversations in the comments below so this what if is kind of determined by how many layers you want to peel back. So first things first, we are going to throw out the Vizards somewhat. They can still be a faction, and we can still have Aizen doing his holification shenanigans, and maybe these guys can come into the story somewhere later down the road. But I'm sorry to any Shinji, Rose, or Kensei fans, but let's be honest, they were just about worthless in the war. And guys, I love these guys, but they truly were. Kubo didn't give them the shine they deserved. Now, on the other hand, Aizen, Gein, and Tozen are going to be extremely useful assets, way better than Shinji, Rose, or Kensei ever could be. Now, like I said, I am fully aware that this what-if could never take place. It would mean captains having to switch places, Kisuke still being around. So much of the story would change. But guys, just for the sake of this what-if and just for the sake of fun, we're going to say that they are captains still on the Gote 13 going into the war. Because like I said, I don't mainly want to talk about the story with these guys in it. I want to talk about how they would interact with the Stern Raider, how they would combat them, how they would strategize. I think it's going to be a ton of fun because these guys bring so much to the table. So guys, let's get started with Gein first. How would he go about handling everything going on in the first and second invasions? Now, Gein, Aizen, and Tozen are still going to be ca in cahoots in this what if. That's something that can't change. I think they're going to be somewhat close to each other on the battlefield. And even before the war starts, you're going to have a Gein more or less being like, Captain Aizen, the Quincy are coming back. We know they're going to attack. How are we going to proceed? I think Aizen would command Gein and Tozen to stay in constant communication with him, if not just by his side, throughout the entire first invasion. Aizen's also going to be aware that the Stern Raider can somehow mess with a Bankai. He's not going to know that it can be stolen, but he's going to be under the preface that it can be sealed. So he's going to direct Gein to only use his Shikai. And probably Tozen too, but the interesting thing about Tozen is he may be um, defended from the whole Bankai stealing medallion because of the holification experiments that Aizen performed on him. And like I said, this what if's going to be a little bit all over the place, but I would say that I that Tozen would probably still have his holification powers in this what if. So what I'm saying is is Aizen would tell Gein and Tozen, hey, guys, don't whip out your Bonkais because they could easily be sealed. Let me handle everything with my Shikai Koyoka Sugetsu. 
I still think, though, even while, without the protection of Eisen, Gein would operate in a very fascinating way. We know he's very cunning and very sly. Heck, there's a good chance that Gein may kind of just hide out in the shadows and kind of observe everything going on. He's not really the gambling man. Like I said, ultimately, he would still be wanting to take down Eisen. That would probably still stay true in this what if. And he would also be wanting to keep an eye on wherever Ron Giku was at. But as far as like interactions with the Stern Ritter, I think we would be treated to some of the greatest dialogue in all of Bleach. Every time Gein says anything, he just captivates everyone. He's extremely strong. Keep that in mind. Even his Shikai alone is very potent. So even without having to whip out a Bonkai, I think he'd still be able to combat the Quincy fairly well. Like I said, even if he was going to run in, even if he were to run into one. I mean, really, if Gein was to run into a very powerful Sternritter that he didn't think he could take on by himself, I don't think Gein would be above just retreating. Unlike all the other Shinigami who are going to either keep fighting or go down trying for the sake of the Soul Society, I think Gein, being the strategist he is, and not having that like supreme loyalty to Soul, so or to Soul Society would allow him to have the humbleness just to retreat. Like, let's get out of here. Let's regroup. I'm going to meet up, meet back up with Lord Eisen and Tozen, and we'll figure this out. Really, if you think about it, Gein's got one of the most cracked Shikai in the entire series. Shinsho is extremely potent, and Gein's really good at using it in weird, obscure ways to throw off his opponent. Like, can you just picture Gein, like, making, like, a soldat shish kebab <laughs> with his Shikai? Oh, I love it. But, yeah, I think Gein's interactions would be insane. Like, ultimately, he's still going to be keeping an eye on Aizen, and just think, Gein was was able to become a captain even with hiding most of like his capabilities from Aizen he was still able to become a captain like that's how strong this guy is really out of the original Gote 13 captains from the Soul Society arc Gein is one of the very strongest I mean this man with his Bankai is able to take down a Hogio um infused eyes in and like that is just insane anyways i digress but gein would have no problem combating most of the mid-tier stern ritter and i truly believe that so like I mentioned earlier, regardless of motivation, Gein, Eisen, and Tozen are probably going to be grouped together, and they're going to begin to start running into Stern Ritter. And this is where this gets extremely fun because it's Sosuke Eisen. Like, no matter what universe this guy's in, whether it be my YouTube video or Bleach, he absolutely steals the show. And he's going to do that in this What If. Because there's a good chance Eisen isn't even going to have to touch his Zompok Toe. Eisen is such a efficient keto user that he's just going to be whip out some fancy incantation and literally blow one of the stern ritter away with like a hot 99 or just something insane so let me paint you an awesome picture for a second we've got some stern ritter uh take your pick uh, mask -ma mask -to masculine, let's say. Okay, say he comes up and he begins to battle eyes, and he's gonna be like, use your Bonkai so I can steal it. You no, know, he's not gonna say that, but that's what he's gonna be thinking, you know? And Aizen's not gonna have to, his Sheikai's gonna completely handle any Stern Ritter. Like, I, I'm... It, there's no way Aizen's losing to anyone besides maybe Yuha, and guys, that may sound extreme, but think about it. What kind of... Hacks abilities to the Stern Ritter, other than maybe Ugrim. What are how are they going to defend against Aizen's Koikasugetsu? They're not going to be able to. It's going to be insane. And like I said, they're going to be like coaxing him into like using his Bonkai, and it's not going to matter because he's going to be able to, to decimate them even without a Bonkai. Now, a lot of you are probably like Sterling, slow down. Like, what if he runs into like Asnot's the Fear? And something like that would not be a problem for Sosuke. You have to remember that, like, when you're battling Sosuke, who you're looking at may not actually even be Sosuke. Like, uh, 
Sosuke could get Asnot to, like, infect whoever his buddy was at the time. So whoever, like, so, yeah, Mass to Masculine. Like, literally, Aizen could make Asnot think that Mass to Masculine was him. Like, the mind tricks that he would be playing on the Quincy, like, he could just jump from battle to battle, more or less influencing each Quincy to see what he wants them to see, and ultimately, they would just destroy each other, just like the Gote 13 did in the Iran car arc. That is the same thing that would happen to Yuha's army. I mean, we could even take it one step further. It's absolutely insane how useful Sosuke Shikai is going to be in this battle. He could go around masquerading as you... He doesn't even have to masquerade. He could just literally make the Stern Ritter think that they are talking to their leader. Like, So he just sends a Yuha in front of all the Stern Ritter, and he's like, All right, guys, the plan now is, is I need you all to slit your throats for your master. And, like, they may do it. Like, I, I mean, I'm serious. Like, the things that Aizen, how he would be able to manipulate the battlefield is endless. As a matter of fact, I want to know down in the comments below, how do you think Aizen would use his Shikai in this battle? Because, like I said, the possibilities are endless. Now, I know it probably wouldn't be quite as simple as I'm making it out to be. Obviously, Aizen would have to release his Shikai in front of anyone he would want to manipulate. But literally, he could just flash step around the battlefield and literally release his Shikai. And most of the Stern Ritter in Soul Society are going to be affected by his Koyakusugetsu. Now, when it comes to some of Yuha's royal guard, that may be where Aizen, Gin, and Tozen may have somewhat of a problem. But even then, if he releases his Shikai to even someone like Gerard, he could have Gerard out rampaging around for Aizen's sake. I think the only people that are going to give Aizen any trouble is, like I mentioned, maybe Ugrim. Probably not, though, because he could probably circumvent the balance. And just, like I said, once he uses his Shikai release, he could make Ugrim see anything. Now, if Askin were to get um, Aizen inside his death dealing before Aizen could release his Shikai, then we have a different story. But even then, he could maybe release... Um, his Shikai afterwards and still it be potent enough and him be able to find a way to escape the Gift Ball Deluxe. Anyways, I'm rambling. What I mean is Aizen is going to be able to take down any mid-tier Stern Ritter and maybe even the Royal Guard. Like I said, it's all up to imagination at this point just because of how strong Aizen Shikai truly, truly is. Now, I haven't forgot about good old Kaname Tozen. I want to paint you a new picture now. So we still have Aizen, Gin, and Tozen roaming through the battlefield, um, combating Quincy, and then the Bonkai stealing begins to happen. And Sosuke's curious, so he's, he could just command uh, Tozen, you know, Tozen, use your Bonkai. I'd like to see how this works. So, you know, Tozen goes to activate his... Might I add, extremely hacks Bonkai, and the Quincy would go to steal it, and it wouldn't work. Because at this point, it's very likely that Kaname would have his holification powers, thus making the Bondot, or Bonkai stealing medallion worthless. So yeah, this Kaname wouldn't only have access to his extremely hacks Bonkai, but he could utilize the resurrection form that we see in the fake Kurakura Town arc, and that would be extremely potent. I would consider a Resurrection right up there with a Bonkai amp and even a Volsh standing amp. So what you have is a group of Shinigami and Gin, Aizen, and Tozen that are just making their way through the battlefield, completely decimating everyone. Between all three of those combatants, like I said, with the mixture of Aizen, Shikai, Gein's cunningness, Aizen's cunningness and smarts, and Kaname's resurrection form, it would be... The Stern Ritter aren't going to be able to handle it, so they're just going to make their way right up to Yuha, and Aizen would want to speak with him. Now, this is where the what-if gets extremely crazy and somewhat off the rails. 
But just think about this. What if the extremely potent combination of Aizen, Gein, and Tozen were enough to combat Yuha into having to use, forcing him into having to use the Almighty? And hear me out. There's a huge misconception in the Bleach fandom that uh, Yuha didn't have access to the Almighty during the first invasion. He did. It's just if he were to have activated the Almighty before it was ready, he would have risked dis- taking the souls and the power from his entire Sternritter army, thus putting a halt to the first invasion. So that's why he doesn't activate the Almighty before it's ready. There's too big of a risk to his army. But what I'm saying is what if Aizen, Gein, and Tozen pushed him and Ugrim to that point. What if they were strong enough with their hacks abilities that they were able to push Yuha into activating the Almighty? Now, obviously, they would get decimated after that. Maybe they'd be able, be able to escape, maybe, because the Koiko Sugetsu would still be affecting Yuha. But still, something extremely crazy to think about. But let's say they don't fight. Let's just say they have a conversation, just like in the actual story. Aizen would still end up manipulating Yuha's sense of timing to the point where he would run out of time and have to escape into the shadows, just like in the actual story. The first invasion would come to an end and all the Sternrider would have to disappear because, like I said, Aizen would be able to manipulate Yuha to the point where he would think he was had more time than he did, just like in the actual story. So then that would give Gein, Aizen, and Tozen, and Soul Society in general, a chance to regroup for the second invasion, just like in the story. There's a very good chance that Yamamoto doesn't even make it to Yuha, because Aizen makes it there first, and like I said, things run their course, and the first invasion comes to an end. Or, like I said, Aizen combats him, and more people show up on the battlefield. Ultimately, they still end up getting decimated by the Almighty at this point, but it's still a very interesting thought experiment. Oh, anyways, guys, I know this what if has been completely off the rails, but as a huge fan of Bleach and a huge fan of all three of these Shinigami, I couldn't help but to start thinking about the interactions and how they would handle the Blood War. I think it's extremely fascinating. Like I said, I think Aizen Shikai would be such a pivotal part of the first invasion that it would probably end up saving the Shinigami skin. Guys, I want to know down in the comments below, how do you think the interactions would go? Are you, do you guys just think I'm crazy and think this video is off the rails? Or do you think it was a fun discussion, guys? I don't care. Tell me in the comments below. Like I said, I just want to discuss Bleach with friends who also love Bleach. You're welcome to give me a hard time because like I said, I know this is off the rails. But it was mainly just more for the interactions which are complete gold we all love aizen and we all love his power so it was really fun to sit and talk about how a free loose aizen would operate in the thousand year blood war now (laughs) aizen being aizen he would probably take advantage of all the craziness going on and try to get up into the royal palace or He's still under the impression that you have to create an Oaken. So who knows? He may go down to Kurakura Town and start his whole plan down there. It's even crazier to think of this what if is if Aizen had the Hogyoku that not quite as strong as the one that he would eventually go on to have, but say he did have that unperfect Hogyoku, how would him having that have affected the war? Could he have holified more Shinigami? Like, oh man, the possibilities are completely endless, and like I said, extremely fun. So guys, let's keep the Um, discussion going on down in the comments how do you think these interactions would go how strong do you think Gein is how strong do you think Tozen is how strong do you think Aizen is like I said I am open to talking about anything I love it guys and until the next video this has been what if Aizen Gein and Tozen were in the thousand year blood war this is Sterling signing out